Chris, first of all, welcome to Brentford. Thanks a lot. Delighted to be here. Yeah, I was going to say, how does it feel to be not only a Brentford player, but a Premier League footballer? No, it's fantastic. It's something I've dreamt about since I started playing football. So to finally be able to play in the Premier League and to represent uh, such a fantastic club like Brentford is, yeah, it's a huge honour for me. And a lot of our fans will know about you from your time at Celtic and playing for Norway as well. But there'll be also a group like me, who you came on the radar very early as a wonder kid on Football Manager. Did you know you've got this legendary status on the game, Football Manager? Uh, I had no idea, to be honest. I've never played Football Manager, but you told me about this and it's uh, interesting, yes, absolutely. Well, I've bought you quite a few times on it, right? I've bought you for Brentford, but I've played you in midfield sometimes. I've played you at the back. And obviously for Celtic, you've played predominantly as a centre-back. Where do you prefer playing? No, for sure, I'm a, I'm a central half. I, I played in the midfield when I played back home in start, and I uh, always uh, thought I was going to uh, turn into a centre half. But for me to develop, I thought it was better to get used to the ball in the tight areas in the midfield. So there was always a, a clear pathway and a clear plan to play centre half at the end. So the other thing is, a lot of people who be looking at is going, how much are you on fantasy football? Because that's another thing now in the Premier League. Everyone wants to buy you on fantasy football. Why should people put you in their team? What are you going to bring? Why are you going to eat your numbers? No, I seem like probably the most boring guy. I've never played football <laughs> manager, I've never on fantasy, but I uh, know I, I, I like uh, contributing forward with the ball, bring the ball out from defence, uh, create passes, hopefully create some assists. And uh, in Brentford here, they're so good at zonal defence, so hopefully we can uh, defend well as well. So uh, there's probably a few few Brentford players you should put into your team. Yeah. <laughs> so is that so you talked about that bringing the ball out of defence and you talked about our defence and stuff. Was that something that Thomas and Brian spoke to you about before you joined? Yeah, I had uh, a few great talks with the gaffer and Brian. Uh, obviously, I, I know that I'm good on the ball. I, I got the physical uh, attributes to, to, to play in the league, but also know that I have a lot of stuff I need to develop. I'm still young. I want to, I want to see how far I can reach in football and uh, for them to be able to go here, learn a lot from Brian, learn a lot from the gaffer in terms of the zonal defence, how to position yourself and the, the stuff I, I think I need to develop is fantastic. And you'll obviously be lining up alongside someone that I think you look a little bit like. I think you look like a slightly younger version of Pontus Janssen. <laughs> yeah, obviously, obviously he's a Scandinavian legend, so <laughs> I, I, will, I will not consider myself that, but uh, he's, he's done uh, fantastic the years he's been abroad yeah. and the way he's played in Leeds and the way he's played here has been incredible to watch. And that's not where the similarities end, just physically, but also you're a leader like Pontus as well, and I couldn't believe this, but you were captain of your first club start at just the age of 16, right? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was the main uh, captain, I, I was lucky enough to be captain. Uh, uh, in a game there against my childhood uh, club, so that was an incredible moment. I walked out there uh, in front of my family and friends uh, on the home ground I was going to every single time uh, since I was five years old, so that was a special moment. So that was against Lillestrøm, who you, you supported right yeah. as a kid. And yeah. how did that come about then, that you became captain? Because for a 16-year-old to be named captain in a matchday squad is, is pretty big. Yeah, it was quite a surreal moment for me. It was. Uh, Special, as I said, walking out in front of my family and friends, and uh, especially when you play Lille the, the club I've supported my whole life was a very special moment. So it's uh, it will be very difficult to top a game like that. Were you nervous because you would have been playing? I don't know if you there were your teammates, but you had to bark out a few orders at some experienced players. I imagine you had no qualms. No, I've I've, I've never been uh, afraid of doing that. I, I expect uh, my teammates to to give me stick when uh, that's necessary. I, give, I expect them to tell me when uh, I should do, be doing something uh, um, different and uh, I do that to my teammates as well. I think that's a very, very healthy relationship. If you have that trust, if you have that uh, togetherness in the dressing room, you're not afraid to tell, tell someone that they have to do something else. So that's yeah. uh, what I expect from my teammates as well. And talking of captains, I saw you spoke about your, your old captain at Celtic, uh, Scott Brown. You said he's the perfect captain. What did you mean by that? For me, Bruni is, uh, is a legend in Celtic. Uh, he's probably the, the, the yeah, by far the uh, most natural leader I've ever played with. He, the way he conducts himself on the pitch, in training, and in games, and in the dressing room is he's uh, the main reason Celtic has been so successful the last year. So, uh, no, I only have great things to say about Bruni, to be fair. And for you, when you joined as a young player at 17, to be working with someone like that, have you taken a lot, I guess, from him in how you carry yourself and, and in your game, I guess? Yeah, of course, you try to learn as much as you can from the best people and uh, the way Bruni was training every day was really 
uh, really impressive and I try to get up to his standards every single day because I see how successful he was and uh, hopefully one day I can uh, uh, be, uh, be achieving uh, yeah, not uh, not the same maybe, but uh, almost uh, up to his level. So that would be incredible. But then, then I know I have to put in uh, a massive amount of training. And I want to talk about the Scottish League and your time at Celtic because I think it gets a bit of a bad rep. And I've I've watched quite a lot of it, and it's a tough league, isn't it? It's, it? It is tough. And as a young player, how good was that for your development? Going over there at what 17 and playing in a physical league and a tough league. The, the, the way they, you, you come into the team, you have to win every single game. The expectations are sky high. Uh, the whole city is so intense about football. And uh, oh, it's just it's just a fantastic experience for a young player. And uh, I will have, I got so many great memories from Celtic and uh, I'll leave Celtic with a smile on my face because it's been a fantastic journey. And so you had, you had six great years there. Um, how would you compare the player when you turned up at Celtic to the one that sat now here as a Brentford player? No, of course I got signed as an as a offensive midfielder. I came in, I think I was, when I, we spoke about this with the physical guy before I left, I was 82 kilos when I signed <laughs> and I uh, left now 94 kilos and a, and a centre half. So it's been, a, it's been an incredible journey. Obviously, I, for six months I didn't play a second. I went out on loan to Kilmarnock really really got the experience of playing senior football there, playing as a centre half and I've gradually taken steps and uh, I've been, uh, I'm so grateful for what everything Celtic has done to me. They've been a huge part of my de development and I'm, I'm so thankful for everything they've done. And today you've had your, your first day here, how have you got on with the lads? And oh, it's been great, it uh, seems like a really, really nice bunch of players and uh, really hard working and by just looking at how they train and looking at how they take care of their bodies outside uh, in the gym and in the physio room, there's there's not a coincidence they're now in the Premier League. There's uh, hard work put every single day and that's why this club is so successful. You know what's going to come next? Got to ask you about this. Initiation song. Yeah, did you have yeah. to do one at Celtic? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, yeah I did. I did uh, Bruno Mars, I'm yours. I say a really safe one when I was 18. Extremely nervous. So uh, hopefully no one filmed that. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, you're gonna have to do one. I imagine next week or so. Okay. You're gonna go Bruno Mars again? Probably. Probably. There's nothing to film. Nothing to get excited about. No. Nothing to film. Well, there's every chance we'll have that camera there. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. We'll see if you've got it. Hopefully you don't post it. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and finally, before before you go, a lot of our fans. We we'll want to know this. I've heard your name pronounced a few ways, just so we get it right. How do we pronounce your surname, Chris? Sorry. No, I, I've just turned into saying Christopher Adger. It's, uh, it's an easy way for uh, yeah, British people to announce it. Normally in Norway it's uh, Ayr, but Adger is completely fine. Yeah. Adger's fine, yeah. All right. Top man, thanks for your time, Chris. Thank you. Cheers.